Good afternoon. Thank you for joining this EPC webinar to discuss all matters relating to VOST. I can see from the screen in front of me that we've got uh, 11, at least 11 people uh, joining the conversation this lunchtime, and I hope it includes some of my new friends from Europe who contacted us on Twitter this morning to express interest in what we were talking about. Um, what is VOST? Well, if you're new to the concept, I'm going to explain shortly. But just a few words before we start to explain how this webinar will operate. It is interactive, but please don't attempt to use your microphones as we won't be able to hear them at this end. Instead, if you've got a question or comment, as I hope you will, please use the chat box or the Q&A feature and mark it for all panellists. That way we'll all see your comments and I can deal with them at the end of what I promise is going to be a pretty short presentation. For people joining late or leaving early, or if you simply want to refer at a later date to something we've discussed this morning, then the whole presentation will be recorded and made available on the EPC website uh, next week. My name is Nigel Kay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm an associate lecturer at the Emergency Planning College, and my specific interest is communications. What are the most effective ways of warning the public about an impending emergency? And reminding people that communications is a two-way process and that there's huge potential benefit in listening to incoming information as well. My aim today is to stimulate a conversation within the emergency management community about the potential benefits of VOST and to consider with your help what needs to be done to move us into the next stage of VOST development. VOST is a concept that's been around for about 10 years now. In an emergency, it extends the role of the volunteer into the digital age. The concept of public volunteering in emergencies is well known. On the ground, we see farmers clearing roads after blizzards, groups of 4x4 drivers providing transport, and Raynet, the amateur radio network, supporting communications. And of course, the whole purpose of the Red Cross is to provide volunteer support in emergencies. A virtual operations support team, or VOST, builds on this tradition of volunteering, but it does so in the digital age. Typically, it's a group of trained volunteers who scan the social media reaction to an emergency, sift out the most valuable information, and present it as actionable intelligence to the responder organizations. These actions, we hope, enable emergency responders to create a much more detailed picture of what's happening on the ground than might otherwise ever have been possible. And conceivably, responders can then target their resources that much more effectively. In the past 10 years, digital volunteers have been supporting emergency responders in the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and have provided information and intelligence following a series of natural disasters around the world. During the next 20 minutes or so, I want to look at the development of the VOST concept here in the UK and ask whether emergency planners and managers are making the fullest possible use of this digital technology and just as importantly, are they using the goodwill or tapping into the goodwill of the digital volunteers lining up to offer their services? The catalyst for much of the thinking about VOST has been the emergence and extraordinary expansion of social media. Although the growth of Twitter and Facebook is thought to have plateaued during the past couple of years, the reach of social media in the UK is still impressive. These are the figures for 2018, according to one digital marketing agency called Revive.Digital. Facebook is the biggest. It has 32 million UK users. Twitter is next with 20 million users. Then comes YouTube on just over 19 million followed closely by LinkedIn and Instagram. There are other ways of looking at this data. Other agencies suggest the number of adults using Facebook in the UK may be as high as 79% of the population over 18. And for Twitter, that figure is thought to be around 47% of the adult population. And all of this is taking place against a continuing fall in the readership of newspapers and the fragmentation of television audiences. Radio audiences, it must be said, continue, though, to be quite resilient to change. In the industry where I spent the early part of my career, broadcast journalism, we've seen how consumer technology, combined with social media, has dramatically changed the way that journalists work. 
but it's also created new platforms and outlets for so-called citizen journalism. In fact, there's hardly a single con consumer-facing business that hasn't been significantly affected by this disruptive technology. So perhaps we shouldn't have been surprised when in December 2015, large numbers of people in York turned to Facebook to coordinate their response to the worst floods for 30 years. A Facebook page set up by the cake decorator, Michelle Holmes, attracted 14,000 members in just about 24 hours. There was criticism at the time, just after Christmas, of the Environment Agency and York City Council for their alleged failure to warn the public of the impending floods and what was perceived by some to be a slow response to the damage caused by the rising waters. By contrast, the volunteers who signed up to Michelle Holmes' page got stuck into the cleanup, organised the collection and distribution of dry clothing, as well as food and other essential supplies. But the point to note here is that this was a spontaneous response to a local event, rather than the implementation of a pre-planned relief effort. The second thing to say is this was a, a classic example of traditional volunteering, cleaning, clearing up, collecting clothes and distributing them. But this is not how people envisage the role of a virtual operational support team. It may be that the driver in both cases is social media, but the output of a VOST is information, information which can translate into actionable intelligence. Let's look at a practical example. On Bastille Day in 2016, a lone terrorist drove his 19-ton truck along the crowded seafront in the French city of Nice, killing 86 people and injuring more than 450 others. In a matter of minutes, the French Vost group known as Visov was activated. Throughout that night, they provided a two-way flow of information. Some of the team monitored social media, checking sources and verifying the accuracy of tweets before passing the information onto the strategic coordinating group. Others relayed information to the tens of thousands of social media users attempting to find out what had happened. There are examples of this sort arising from emergencies or disasters all over the world, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and other Europe, European nations as well as, as France. Take a look at this picture. Hundreds of airline passengers evacuated from the terminal at London City Airport after a leaking gas cylinder had been discovered in the terminal building. What's revealing to me is how the people in the foreground are using their mobile phones. Sure, the guy in the middle is making a call, but it looks to me as if most of those around him are using their phones either to search for information about what's going on or sharing their take on the situation with friends and followers on social media. It's a really good illustration for me of social media in action and demonstrates why the volumes of messages created by Twitter and Facebook are so extraordinarily high. And it may be this, the sheer scale of the task, that puts off some emergency responders when they consider how they might monitor social media effectively. But it's almost certainly as well a reluctance to trust the information that is being generated. As we all know only too well, Twitter can sometimes look more like twaddle whether it's an emergency or not. And this is where I start to see the real value of VOST, a potentially valuable pool of trained, skilled social media practitioners who have the tools and the skills to sort the wheat from the chaff and deliver valuable intelligence to the responder organisations. The size of the task is undoubtedly daunting, but there are software tools that can make it more manageable, tools which use geolocation and geotagging to define the geographical parameters of the search area. They're freely available and built into programs like Hootsuite and Twitter 4. This way we can focus on how people in York are describing the floods without having to wade through the views of Twitter users in London, Edinburgh or even New York. I know that only a minority of Twitter users have location services enabled on their phones, but even a small sample of the 47% of adults on the platform can provide useful information. Verification of the initial information isn't straightforward. In fact, it's largely down to what I would call good journalism, interrogating the source of the information and, where possible, using two or more sources to corroborate the account. 
There are also tools like TinEye and Google Reverse Image Search that will help you ascertain whether the dramatic photograph accompanying the tweet is in fact a picture taken in the centre of York today or simply a picture of an earlier flooding event. But the analysis and the verification takes effort and skill and in my conversations with responder organisations it's apparent to me that few of them have the plans in place to ensure that social media can be monitored effectively during the next emergency event. That's why this could well be a task for trained and trusted volunteers, for the VOST organisers, the VOST organisation. The American Red Cross were the pioneers of this work in the USA, but there are other VOST teams in individual states, in Canada and in Australia and New Zealand. Nearly all of them work in partnership with national or local emergency managers, and they're required to demonstrate their understanding of response procedures, a commitment to training their volunteers, and a willingness to undergo some form of accreditation for volunteers. In Europe, there are organizations like the French Visov team, and in Belgium and Spain, other organizations all linked together by an international network of VOST enthusiasts. Europe is also the home of at least two well-developed EU-funded projects to create a more formal structure for utilising the reach of social media. Copernicus is the multi-million euro satellite system which describes itself as an Earth observation programme. Among its many benefits is the ability to support national governments with emergency mapping for post-disaster response. But what makes Copernicus really interesting in relation to VOST is a related project going alongside called E2MC. This seeks to overlay the maps, the Copernicus maps, with data gleaned from social media. There's a diagram on the screen from Copernicus and E2MC. I have to say, however, that it's not clear whether uh, British users will still have uh, access to either Copernicus or E2MC uh, if the UK leaves uh, the EU uh, in the next month or so. Colleagues joining us today may also be aware of another EC-funded project called iReact. Last summer, the iReact development team tested the platform in Ipswich in a simulated flooding exercise on the River Orwell. iReact brings together data from a range of sources, including social media. You can download the app onto your phone. It enables you to receive warnings and to submit your own observations. According to the iReact team, the development work is complete and they're close to formalising a deal with a commercial partner. So watch this space, as they say. So that's a brief survey of some of the work currently going on around the world to develop the VOST concept. But now I want to look closer to home at what is possibly the most successful implementation of the VOST concept here in the UK. DG Vost has been operating in the Dumfries and Galloway police area for a number of years and its aims are quite simple. To gather and provide real-time information for the benefit of the public, to distribute key safety message, messages during a major incident or emergency, to counter misinformation and to provide better situational awareness for incident commanders by gathering geodata, text, pictures, video, or a combination of these media from the public. To understand how the DG Vost works, you really need to take a look at their website, which is a very useful explainer. Case studies on the site include how Vost was rolled out during two severe winter storms. And there's praise on the site too from Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary in Scotland who described it as an innovative and effective means of communicating with the public during emergency situations. And there's recognition for the scheme too from the, their police partners, Dumfries and Galloway Council, who said that uh, DG Vost addresses some of the most significant challenges responders can face during uh, an emergency disruption. Specifically, they talk about developing situational awareness and effective communications with both the public uh, and the media. And when I spoke to the team the other week behind DG Vost, I was told that there are now active plans to roll out the concept across other Scottish regions. Frankly, I think this is incredibly encouraging. So, in summary, uh, is there an argument for rolling out Vost across the UK? And if the answer is yes, then what do we need to do now to promote the concept of Vost among emergency planners, managers, and the blue light services? 
What are the barriers that stand in the way of the much wider application of WAST and how do we overcome them? That's it from me. If you're all happy, I'm going to um, draw a close to this brief webinar. Thank you very much indeed for attending. Uh, it's been uh, it's terrific, a terrific uh, uh, response, and I hope we can take this work forward together. Thank you very much indeed. Have a good afternoon.